five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition, liftoff. What today really represents is a new era in spaceflight, an, an era where we are looking forward to being one customer as an agency and as a country. We're looking forward to being one customer of many customers in a, in a robust commercial marketplace in low Earth orbit so that we can drive down cost and increase access in ways that uh, historically have not been possible. Oh, I always thought we would fail, so this is uh, all, it's all upside. You know, I thought maybe we had a 10% chance of reaching orbit starting out, so then uh, and people thought, when we started SpaceX, they said, oh, you're going to fail. Uh, so I agree. I think we probably will fail. Yeah. But it's worth trying anyway. Everything appears to be working fine. We opened the nose cone. The forward Draco thruster is fired. Uh, the propellant system is working. The solar arrays work. It's much more complex than Dragon 1 uh, because you have the uh, integrated launch escape thrusters, the Super Draco uh, launch escape thrusters on the side. We'll be docking for the first time. Previously, we would go close to the space station and the arm would reach out and, and grab, um, in, drag, in case Dragon 1, and it would grab Dragon 1 and attach it to the space station. In this case, the spacecraft will fly on, literally fly on to the space station um, and attach itself. I see hypersonic re-entry is probably my biggest concern. Oh, just because of the asymmetric back shell. You've got the uh, launch escape thruster pods. Um, that could potentially cause a role instability on re-entry. I think it's unlikely. We've run simulations a thousand times, but this is a possibility. I think we'll learn a lot about the modeling of the vehicle, how the aerodynamics works for this particular vehicle and the GNC system during entry. So to me, it's really a, a bit of a dress rehearsal for the Demo-2 mission. Um, we're going to fly all aspects of the mission. So I think we'll learn you know, a lot of subtle things about the spacecraft how it does thermally, how the GNC system works. Getting into the rendezvous, uh, it'll be really important to check out how the sensors work as we approach station. You know, it's the first time we've flown to the, this particular integrated docking uh, apparatus uh, with this vehicle. Uh, there's a series of uh, steps we'll take as we move in closer to station to make sure that the systems are performing well on the Dragon. Uh, obviously, the crew on station will be monitoring the vehicle coming in. And, and then at the end of the flight, you know, uh, while we're docked also, we'll understand how, how it works at station. We're going to exchange data between Dragon and the space station. We exchange airflow between the two vehicles. And then at the end of the flight, we'll do the undock maneuver. Um, and then uh, separate the trunk is another big, big event, right? The, the, before we deorbit, we'll separate the trunk and then come in for the deorbit and entry. So lots of different pieces. And each piece, you know, my experience is they'll we'll learn a little bit. The, the parachutes are, are new. Will the parachutes deploy uh, correctly? And then will, will the system guide Dragon 2 to the right location? This, this was like kind of co-designed by NASA and SpaceX. The NASA engineering team understands the vehicle really quite well. If we work hand in hand with SpaceX, they will propose changes to us. We have an engineering team that will look at every one of those changes. So it's a very methodical process. I would say we have great teamwork between NASA and SpaceX. It's a test flight, but not really for us. We, we consider this one for SCORE. It really is flying to the ISS, and we really want to protect the crew on board and the uh, assets. I think we also have learned how to work together as a team, and that, that's really the reason that Doug and I came to, to Florida to participate uh, from inside the firing room. We, of course, on launch day won't be able to do that, but it, it's great to understand how that team works. Uh, being a member of it that's maybe not represented during uh, the Demo-1 mission, we can take advantage of this experience and, and take that with us when we fly on our missions uh, uh, later this year. And in fact, right after uh, Dragon, you know, separated and fired the thrusters, I went over and asked them what, what they, they thought, you know, and they're like, how do you feel about flying on it? Uh, you're like, it seems like you feel good about flying on it. I was like, okay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We've probably seen uh, half a dozen, maybe three quarters of a dozen combination of static fires or launches uh, either from here or from Hawthorne. Uh, and, you know, every time we participate, you know, it's, it's just amazing to see how the team is hitting its stride.
uh, getting these vehicles ready to go into space. And I think, you know, every launch count or every static fire, there are technical issues that the team has to go back and solve real time. And 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 I don't think this was any different. And I thought everybody handled their you know their roles very well. And it seemed like everything went smoothly all the way up until launch and so far so good so uh, from our standpoint this is this is what you want to see you want to see the team hitting its stride uh, as we get ready to put people on these things it's been 17 years we still haven't launched anyone yet <laughs> but hopefully we will later this year humanity landing on the moon man that was maybe the greatest thing ever so i can't believe we're launching from that pad hope we go back to the moon soon that's the goal yeah we should have a base on the moon like a the permanently occupied human base on the moon and send people to Mars, you know, and a city, build a city on Mars. That's what we should do. We've got to focus on the, getting this, this right for sure. That's the priority. Uh, but then after that, maybe something beyond, beyond Earth orbit. You know, we just heard Elon say he'd, he'd be interested in having a permanent presence on the moon. For sure. We should do it. Well, that's, um, that's the, that's the very first space policy directive given by the President of the United States to me as the NASA Administrator, that we're going to go to the moon and we're going to go sustainably. So when we say sustainably, that means we're going to stay. And of course, the objective here is uh, not just humans, but also landers and rovers and robots and humans. We're going to utilize the resources of the moon. That's a critically important part of the agenda. Why? We have to be able to live and work on another world for long periods of time. We have to be able to use those resources. Uh, and then ultimately we need to prove all of this out at the moon, which is a three day journey from earth. And so that's why the moon matters. It's why the moon is so important. It's the proving ground. And then at the end, um, we wanna take all those technologies, all those capabilities. We wanna retire the risk and, and go to Mars. And interestingly today, as, as Elon and I were out uh, on the launch pad, 39A, we, uh, we had a conversation about why he got involved in this to begin with, and it was to inspire America to increase NASA's budget because of the return we get on those activities. The benefits humanity has received from space exploration in general is immeasurable. The return on investment we get from that as a nation, you know, we're sensing the Earth in every part of the mag electromagnetic spectrum, and because of that, we can increase crop yields, we can reduce water usage, at the same time, we can preserve nitrates in the soil, feeding more of the world than ever before because of what NASA does. It's born from this little agency that occupies less than one half of 1% of the federal budget, and the return on that has been astonishing. I, know, I really believe in the future of space, and, and I think it's important that we become a space praying civilization and, and I'll be out there among the stars. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, makes people excited about the future. And, it, and we want the things that are in science fiction novels and movies not to be science fiction forever. We want them to be real one day.